First at 11, we're in a pinpoint weather alert as thousands remain without power tonight and damage cleanup continues in the wake of Henri. Good evening, I'm Shannon Heggie. I'm Mike Montecalvo. Henri has been downgraded from a tropical storm to a depression as it passes through Connecticut tonight. And at this hour, about 50,000 National Grid customers in Rhode Island are without power, the vast majority in Washington County, which took the brunt of the storm. The utility warns it will likely take several days to get customers back online. And here's some of the video we captured throughout our area from gusty winds on the water in East Providence to the seawall in Westerly and a tree down in South King. Town. And after that tree got knocked down on Rose Hill Road, neighbors came out with their tractors and tools to clean up the mess. Thanks to Gina Marcial for sending in this picture. Check out this photo out of North Kingstown. A tree is uprooted and topples onto a house. This photo sent in to us from Liz Maddy at the Shore Acres Community Association in Quonset. And over in Richmond, it looks like a tree fell down on some power lines, tipping the telephone pole. This is down on Hillsdale Road. We have team coverage tonight. Our 12 News reporters are standing by along with Chief Meteorologist Tony Petrarca. But first, let's send it over to meteorologist TJ Del Santo. He's live in the weather yard with the latest data. TJ? And just a, a slight breeze out here in the weather yard, otherwise a fairly quiet night here in East Providence. Let's take a look back at some of those power outage numbers. This uh, just updated a short time ago, and you can see down there in Washington County, South County, still that's where we're finding most of the outages. Uh, National Grid customers uh, reporting outages, 40,000 plus down there along uh, the southern part of Rhode Island. In total, Rhode Island, 51,000 people now with without power in uh, the ocean state. And the numbers have been dropping fairly fast. We topped out at 84,000 earlier in the afternoon. Uh, the reason why? The strong winds, Point Judith, Charlestown, Rose Island there, Newport, Beaver Tail, all 50 mile an hour gusts or higher, as high as 70 there in Point Judith. Meanwhile, in the Providence area, gusting generally between, uh, say, 35 and 45 miles an hour. Rainfall totals as high as two and three quarter inches there in westerly. So a fairly significant storm, especially in terms of wind and the number of power outages, but the storm does continue to weaken. In fact, it's just a, a tropical depression now after being a hurricane a little while ago, right, Tony? Yeah, it continues to be downgraded. Of course, as these storms move over land, they continue to weaken. We take a look at a depression now through western Connecticut, what was once a Category 1 hurricane with winds of 75, now down to 30 miles per hour. Still a bit breezy. We're looking at New Bedford, but clearly not the kind of damaging wind that was along the coastline this morning and earlier this afternoon. Not much of the way of precipitation out there on Doppler radar, other than a few sprinkles. As the storm pulls west, it's taken the very heavy rain out towards the uh, Hudson Valley of New York. There is the center of low pressure, what's left of the storm, making landfall on Block Island and westerly at around 12:15 this afternoon. A blend of clouds and sunshine, humid tomorrow morning. Temperature at 72. A warm, summery day tomorrow with a mix of clouds and sunshine. But keep an eye to the sky, especially very late in the afternoon and towards evening. Scattered showers and thunderstorms, and some of that activity will actually be remnant moisture from once Henri. So that risk of some thunderstorms by early tomorrow evening. We'll get a closer look at that. The full forecast coming up in a little bit. Tony, thank you. The eye of the storm focused on westerly, and that's where Henri first made landfall in Rhode Island this afternoon. 12 News reporter Sheena Loshudo has been in town since yesterday following the storm every step of the way, and she joins us now live from Esquamacut Beach with the latest on things there. Sheena? Well, we have some good news to share first. Just in the last 10 minutes or so, we saw some lights come back on here in Westerly. Of course, they were without power for much of the day, and still most of the town is still in that situation. First, though, thankfully, these beachfront businesses were spared from any major damage. Boarded up windows and generators, all signs of a coastal community after severe weather. This was the scene as Henri made landfall in Westerly, Rhode Island Sunday. Roaring waves, powerful winds, and heavy rainfall. Um, I've seen a lot worse, um, but this is definitely doing a lot of damage to the sand. You can see the erosion that's really taking it out. Roads in front of Misquamkit Beach flooded. 
Similar sites captured in the Watch Hill part of town, too. Parking lots looking more like ponds. Many capturing the fierce motions of Mother Nature in person, despite being warned by officials to stay at home. We've got our feet on the ground so we know what's going on, so that we can actually get to work and create the recovery. Rhode Island Governor Dan McKee taking a look at the coastal town himself. During a call with President Joe Biden, McKee says he stressed how communities like Westerly are often hardest hit. And with thousands without power, in this town alone, he says he's thankful the state has experience tackling storms like this one. Our uh, public safety teams, our emergency management, our National Guard, all our local responders, they've gone through this before. So safety is a, a priority, but we also need to get better at the recovery, and that's why I'm down here in Wesley today. Down power lines and trees contributing to the power outages are cameras even capturing a toppled tree over a car. And homeowners in this area had their gas turned off before the storm hit. Crews will be back here first thing tomorrow morning to turn them back on. Of course, this is not the only coastal community impacted by severe weather like this. Let's head to 12 News reporter Matt Paddock in Narragansett. It was wet and windy early Sunday morning, but as the day went on, the Narragansett seawall right here, it became an attraction to locals and tourists alike. It's dark along the water in Narragansett. The aftermath of Henri is being felt by locals. Some of that aftermath, including roaring winds, tipped over trees and broken branches, and waves ripping up against the seawall. At one point, thousands in Narragansett were in the dark. You're looking at the scene in Narragansett early Sunday morning. Pretty crazy. I haven't been in an area with like this many people in a while. When the storm was at its strongest. People want to kind of get out and see like what's happening. That didn't stop hundreds from making their way to the Narragansett seawall. It's crazy how many people actually showed up and like just driving. There's nobody on the road. Then you come out here and there's tons of people. And you're like, how did they get here? Jonathan Ferreira says he was out for the picture perfect moment. You sit there for a while, you get the perfect shot, and it's all worth it. And for others like Asa Carrera, the internet went out and we, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to survive. They were looking for things to do after losing power. I'm, visit, I'm visiting my grandparents. While for tourists like Chloe Clendenin, Kind of weird because we don't have storms like this in California. Say they've never experienced a storm quite like this. Now, Narragansett police tell me that the barricades that are set up across the city, they'll be staying there until early Monday morning. Reporting in Narragansett, Matt Paddock, 12 News. Matt, thank you. Taking another look at viewer submissions, a boat washes ashore at Chepawinoxid Point in Warwick. This video sent in to us from Dana Smith. And Lori Manzi got a great shot of the big waves in Narragansett earlier today. Thanks for sending this in. And thanks to all of our viewers who submitted photos and videos today. You can see a gallery of those images right now on WPRI.com. And remember, you can always send pictures or video to report it at WPRI.com. Millions of people in the northeast were in Andre's path, and those heavy winds and rain enough to topple down trees, power lines, and flood city streets. Massachusetts all the way down to the coast in New Jersey. 12 News reporter Chelsea Jones joins us now with a look at how our region was hit. I mean, the images we're seeing are just incredible. This sparking wire that you'll see happening in South County, and then the down trees happening on homes in Massachusetts. Just incredible video that we've been seeing all day. Just listen and watch as Henri brought howling winds and rain to Rhode Island. Uprooting trees, snapping them at the root, causing them to block access to roads across the ocean state. A similar sight in Massachusetts. Trees fell into homes and on top of cars. And in Connecticut, waves crash onto the shoreline. Further down the coast, in New Jersey, flooding turning neighborhoods into rivers. Cars submerged townside, people trapped as they watch on. And some of the impacts being felt in New York. This is the subway. You can see water falling onto the train there, flooded streets. And a big issue that a lot of people are dealing with are power outages. It still could take a couple days for the power to come back on, but restoration is underway and some lights are turning back on. In the newsroom, I'm Chelsea Jones, 12 News.